Waiting. Hey guys, welcome. We are on air again with you. My name is Tim Schmoyer from Video Creators, and this is my friend Patrick Hanlon from Thinktopia. And we are really excited to talk with you guys about a lot of the content that Patrick has here in this book called Primal Branding Create Zealots for Your Brand, Your Company, and Your Future. I will put a link to it on Amazon in the description below this video. If you guys are hanging out with us, you can go check out some of it there. This isn't really meant to be a book promo as, uh, necessarily, but I really love a lot of stuff that Patrick has in this book. So Patrick, welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Patrick um, is like uh, like a really good guy as far as like community, well probably all the way around, right? Patrick's just like a really good guy, but for uh, online branding and uh, building online communities, online and offline, um, he's the founder, CEO of Thinktopia. He is a Forbes contributor. Um, and Thinktopia works with a lot of brands, helping them launch new products and re-engineer existing ones. And uh, you've worked with a lot of really interesting, fun brands um, like Levi's, Crafts, Best Buy, Bungie, Samsung, Domino's, Taco Bell, United Nations. I'm missing like a hundred of them, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, a couple more. Yeah, just a, just a few, but he's worked with all those guys in building both online communities and offline communities. Actually, when Patrick got started with this, it was like pre-Facebook days and, um, and helping a lot of these brands form communities outside of the internet. And now, um, in our context here, for our discussion here today anyway, we we'll be talking about building online communities around our YouTube channels. And so you can find him at thinktopia.com. He's also a Forbes contributor, like I said, so you can find him also at forbes.com as well. So we are going to jump right into this. Um, we have seven principles that we're going to talk about that make up a primal code and talk about some ideas and some implications that each one of those have for our YouTube channels and how we can really use these principles to develop like a really solid fan base around our YouTube channels and all the content we're doing. But before we do that real quick, I know some of you guys who are top fans of the Video Creators YouTube channel, I'd love to have you guys join us right here in the film strip and talk with me and Patrick and have this discussion along with us. So if you didn't get the invitation already on Google+, Plus, I sent it out like 17 times, so <laughs> I don't know why I didn't get it. But if you didn't, you should be able to just go to the Video Creators page on Google+, Plus, and you should see a little yellow button that right there that says Join Hangout. And so if you are one of those people who's a top fan, you should be able to join us that way, and we'd love to have you uh, right here with us. So it'd be great to have you guys all. Um, I will also be keeping up your, with your comments, so if you have questions for Patrick or from myself regarding the, the subject matter that we're discussing here today, you can leave those as a comment on YouTube and I'd be happy to put you right here and we will um, help you, we'll do our best to help answer those questions for you. So without any further ado, Patrick, tell us a little bit about your primal branding story. Well, first of all, I got, I received the invite 18 times, so, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the Primal Branding, uh, which is a book that was published by Simon Schuster six or seven years ago, it's now in seven languages, um, I came up with this idea while I was uh, working in my garden in Connecticut. I was in advertising and I realized that every creative brief uh, that uh, filled me in on what kind of commercial I was supposed to be doing, no matter what the product was, between the lines everyone wanted to have the next Nike campaign or the next Apple campaign. And that was because there was something special about those brands, at least I, that's the way I read it into the into the into the brief, um, because there was something special about those brands uh, that uh, people really clung to them and they meant something to people. And people talked about Nike tribes and Apple cults. But there was really no way to replicate that other than imitating Nike or Apple, which is not very differentiating, right? And yeah. so what came to the thought that came to me when I was working in my garden is that what is it about brands like Nike, Apple, Coke? Starbucks and so forth that uh, appealed to people and I thought that the the bottom the bottom line getting to the very root of it is that people believed in them and they trusted them and so I started examining then what was it about belief and what were the things that went into belief and I started to realize that well they most belief systems they have icons they have um, something, a creed that they believe in, they have rituals, they have non-believers and so forth. And so I started filling in, uh, filling in the blanks and came up with these seven pieces of what we call now the primal code. And all belief systems uh, today are, you know, really 
that are populated with a community of brand advocates and brand zealots. And once you put this belief system in, in place, you attract those people who share your beliefs, and that creates your community. And fans are basically communities. Yeah. And um, if you want fans, you need this narrative that has all the, these parts, these seven pieces, because that's what helps satisfy your viewers uh, innately in a primal way. And you have to give them something to believe in, something to desire, something that attracts them. You have to create a community. And so these seven pieces that create a belief system um, help drive your narrative when you're building uh, a video or a film or anything commercial. Yeah. And the first piece, of course, is the creation story. Creation story, uh, creation yeah. story is really the backstory. It's where do you come from? Who the heck are you? And uh, how did you get here? And the we all know that Apple started in a garage. Google started at Stanford. And Miley Cyrus came from her dad. <laughs> and uh, so the back that backstory uh, is you know elemental. You know it's Adam and Eve, right? So once we know where you're from, tell us what you're about. The second piece is the creed. Mm -hmm. And the creed, you know, in advertising, it's you, we think of just do it, think different. Um, uh, in film, and when when you just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, you know, uh, Hitchcock was all about the master of suspense. Uh, but every story has a, a spine, a central theme that it, that helps drive the narrative, right? Yeah. It holds things yeah. together. So what's yours? And uh, Dan Wyden at Wyden and Kennedy, they're the agency that does Nike, was explaining to a friend of mine recently, um, he said, you know, Nike is not just about just do it. The thing that really helps propel Nike and give it this sort of counterpoint is, is um, Nike fights sloth. It's fighting sloth, so it's not just about doing, not, not just do it, but fighting sloth, and that's so that kind of thing it helps pull the creed together. The third, once we know where you're from and uh, what you're, we know what you're about, um, identify yourself, and that's what icons are for. Whether you think of the Nike swoosh, the American flag, uh, Statue of Liberty, uh, the smell of Starbucks coffee, etc., Nike icons are really the things that help us identify. Um, identify you and they also tell us what you're about and they also engage all the senses sight sound taste smell we usually think of sight things like the Nike swoosh etc or products uh, like the iPhone or iPod um, and that you know the white uh, look that Apple has but icons also engage uh, taste smell sound and so forth uh, this the sweet 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 in in psycho the shower scene or jaws da -dum. Et cetera, et cetera. So, music, lighting, shooting angles uh, are all iconic. Actors are iconic. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't put John Wayne in a comedy necessarily. Uh, also, the film styles, you know, of John Ford, Werner Herzog, Woody Allen, Mel Brooks, et cetera. These are all iconic, and they signal to us whether this is a comedy, whether it's suspense, whether it's romance. Etc. So when you're using jump cuts in different angles and you're using smash zooms and all this kind of stuff, these are iconic of different types of film genres. Yeah, it's like a style well. that people have grown accustomed to from you as a creator. Um, like I, I certainly know certain uh, creators on YouTube I watch. Like I'm used to that and I kind of expect that from them, right? Exactly. Ab yeah. Absolutely. And let's not forget that 80% of film is music, right? Yeah. And yeah. so. After we uh, know where you're from and what you're about and icons, then we move into rituals. And rituals are really these repeated interactions that we have with the community. And uh, shooting is a ritual, right? Editing is a ritual. Uh, mm -hmm. Acting is a ritual. And viewing is a ritual. E eating popcorn at the movies is a ritual, right? Uh, so how An expensive ritual? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And these are really uh, set up. Um, as a series of expectations, yeah. all right? And how the narrative move along is, is there's a certain ritual that goes through it. And if you're writing a screenplay by page 36, you have to be at a certain point, you know? That, yeah. And that's part of the ritual. Um, anticipation and suspense are ritualistic moments. And so how well you are able to master these is huge, mm -hmm. right? And the sequence of events that we put together in the editing is also huge. And it either meets expect people's expectations, the viewer's expectations, or it confuses them. And uh, as I say in my book, the confused do not buy. 
Yeah. Uh, so if you're I get just, you for one second, just to yeah. point your webcam up a little bit more, so we can see a little bit more of your face, just point it back. Oh, yeah, sorry. You go. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Sorry, folks. Uh, camera angles. Did I say that they're rich? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's part of your brand, right? Is the uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> but. Um, you know, in terms of rituals, many comedies, a lot of them, you know, end with the rite of spring, which is a wedding, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of comedies are, are about, especially recently, are about weddings. Mm -hmm. So after rituals, there's also a special lexicon, what we call the sacred words. Yeah. And all communities, whether you are um, paddleboarding a computer club or in the film academy, have their own lexicon, right? Uh, if you walk into Starbucks, it's ice grande, skinny decaf latte. And I don't even know what that is. Learn. <laughs> and, uh, I am not part. I am not part of that community. So like, I go. I've been to Starbucks like maybe two or three times in the past couple of years, and I'm, like, there's a reason why I don't go in there because I just feel like I don't know even know what to say. Like, I don't know what so, those words are. Yeah, and and you're not a part of that community, right? No. So and you know it, and you'd probably feel the same way if you walked into Chess Club, or I don't know, I don't know yeah, that well. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So the. And, and that's part of the whole thing. And, and our storylines, when we are writing a film or we're doing a video or, or so forth, they also have their own lexicon. Whether um, a little kid is muttering uh, red rum or mm -hmm. if uh, John Wayne is saying partner. I mean, these uh, all instantly signal something to us. Partner, you know, it comes out of the lexicon of westerns, of course, and so forth. And if they're singing Springtime for Hitler, you know, it's a totally different thing. And, and this yeah. helps establish a genre or a worldview that's that we're trying, trying to communicate here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you watch Twilight, we had to learn or we were educated about a whole different parallel world that is, is a part of our ordinary wor world, right? Mm -hmm. We had to learn about vampires and werewolves and, and so forth. So the lexicon or sacred words are crucial to uh, people understanding and becoming a part of your world. Yes. After that, uh, the second to the last is the, what we call non-believers. Non-believers in branding is uh, usually Coke versus Pepsi, Mac people versus PC people, Republicans versus Mac Democrats. Mac people always win, just so you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, yeah, but in film, uh, we set ourselves up against what this is not. This is not a murder mystery. It's a comedy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not a romantic. It's or further, it's a romantic comedy. You know. Mm -hmm. And so, the uh, when it gets interesting, of course, is when uh, CSI gets put inside uh, Jack the Ripper's London, like BBC's Ripper, if you've seen that series. And so, the non-believers really help us shape what we're what we are by telling us what we're not. And then yeah. finally, there's the leader. And the leader is the one who set out against all odds in order to recreate the world according to their own point of view. Uh, in film, it's the protagonist or the hero. Uh, and it's also you, because you're responsible for putting all seven pieces of what we call primal code together. Yeah. So you can put all these things together, and you've really created a holistic, interconnected narrative um, that people respond to at a really a primal level and you snap their heads around and you hit them in the gut yeah. and when you look at most great films today and deconstruct them according to primal code you can also deconstruct Huckleberry Finn, uh, Lady Gaga, Nike, Apple, uh, Ap uh, New York City, Brooklyn according to these seven pieces and understand, understand why they're so resonant with people, why they mean something to people, why they're relevant to people and why they actually attract people and yeah. this counts. Did you want to add something? Sorry. Oh no, I was agreeing with you. Yeah, there's really a lot of like, you know, what we believe really drives uh, what we value, and what we value determines what kind of communities we're going to be a part of. And a lot of what you're saying, which for you guys who are watching, we're going to dig into each one of these separately here in a second um, and give you some practical examples for your channels. But um, just kind of give you an overall foundation of like of all the stuff. This is all like really, really good. So. So. Are you ready to jump in? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, just uh, real quickly, you know, this product yeah. takes things, you know, products, people, places, and creates a narrative that transform them from being meaningless to becoming meaningful. And throughout, yeah. you know, our history, uh, the history of the world has been driven by and changed and created because from the mass of, of millions of people who said, who cares, one, put, one person stood up and said, well, I care. And I'm holding yeah. up the uh, picture of Tiananmen Square here, the one man famous shot, iconic shot of one man standing in front of the tanks. 
Yeah. That's it. So uh, cool. I've run through it kind of quickly because Tim said we had very little time. But so yeah, now I wish we had like three hours. <laughs> In fact, like as I was preparing for this, you know, I was skimming back through the book again, and I was like, look, like just kind of looking at all my notes, and I was like, holy, how are we gonna do all this in an hour? Uh, but the guys, just so you know, this has been like really influential for me. Um, I think I read it like a year and a half, two years ago. I don't remember when I read it, but um, ever since then, I've been trying to think of ways that how can I implement this into my uh, YouTube strategy and developing communities online based on the principles that uh, Patrick has discovered and laid out clearly um, in this book. So um, first of all, Patrick, we got to compliment you on your slides. He says very high tech with those slides, and I yeah, agree. Thank those, you. Are, yeah, thank those are you. awesome. Yes. <laughs> so um, the rest of you guys, as we go through this, um, again, I'm sorry that the invitation to the top fans isn't coming through in Google+, Plus, but it is Google+, Plus, and that's just how things work around here sometimes. So, uh, But the rest of you guys, please comment below and uh, as we go through some of these, because I would love to hear some of the examples and ideas that you guys come up with as we talk about some of this stuff. So the first one is the creation story. And uh, I'm taking this straight from Patrick's book. And the creation story is the crucial first step in providing answers to why people should care about you or your product or your service. The creation story not only answers who you are and where you come from, but helps set up further pieces of the primal code. It's what provides context and provides meaning for your brand or your YouTube channel or anything else going um, forward. So, uh, Patrick, a couple ideas that I've come up with of how I've implemented this into my channel is uh, on our family channel. Um, what we have done is like uh, at the end of most of our videos, I'm doing every video, but um, the end of most of our videos, I have taken like um, I have like a little end card like that just kind of highlights some things. And at the end, I annotate use an annotation on YouTube a link to a video that spells out our creation story in about a minute and a half. And I actually put like a lot of time into thinking through the script for that. Like, what's important for people to know about our story? Who are we? Where did we come from? How did we get to where we are today? Like, like just trying to like catch people up in the story. Um, and I think it's really interesting. I think you even talk about this in, in your book. There's a couple TV shows like Gilligan's Island. Um, you probably yeah. remember the other ones that actually tell the creation story as their branded intro. What were some of those other ones that tell that story that bring people uh, up to there's date? There's a guy whose name now? I'm totally blanking on right now, but that's what he did in every uh, 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 the, the music on this that set up the sitcom. Is yeah, the oh, it was the um, uh, Beverly Hills, right? They do the same thing. Yeah, Beverly Hillbillies was another one. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, basically gave because his notion was that, uh, well, well, basically was that if you if people didn't understand where they were at, but really put them in the place and set up the storyline every time, so they so everyone was in on the game basically. Yeah, and you you hear the same thing when you hear new bands on the radio, and the DJ will come on after this before or after the song and say, hey, these guys were friends in high school, or they met out in Hollywood, or they. Uh, uh, you know, they came from Liverpool, et cetera, et cetera, because it helps people. Um, it's just a grounding and helps them become meaningful. Yeah. Yeah, so what we try to do is, like, we don't want to put it at the beginning of our video for, like, every single person, like, because that would kind of bore some of our subscribers, like, I'll skip, you know, this part. So we actually just put it at the end. So if people actually watched our video through to its full duration and got to the end, they would probably be... Like those would probably be the people who are also interested in going back and saying, "Who are these guys? What are they about?" You know, and learning more, and finding out that creation story that provides the context and provides the meaning then for the rest of our channel um, and the yeah. rest of the primal code that we'll get into. So yeah, you make a video that creatively exp explains and tells your creation story. Um, annotate it to the end of, in the videos or at least put it in the description text of like all your videos for people who might want to check out more uh, and then one of the things that we also try to do is just try to like allude back to that creation story as much as possible not necessarily to that video but like as we're talking in our content like because um, you gotta remember like every video you do is potentially someone's very first exposure to you right and so like going back and just like reminding them or saying like hey guys remember when I you know that and those of you who are diehard fans like they'll remember that and they'll know what you're talking about the rest of them uh, who aren't familiar with that that might prompt some curiosity for them to go back and watch that if you provide that as a quick easy resource for them to click on and go check out so the couple yeah, of examples oh sorry go ahead Oh, I was just going to say another great place for that, those backstories is during the Olympics. 
when they pick out uh, different uh, athletes and so forth and go back to their hometown and all of that. And um, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Here's the backstory. That's like that's what that's what helps you start caring about these people. Otherwise, it's just a skier going down at like Mach seven or something down a big hill and uh, exactly. putting their life at risk. <laughs> but uh, but you understand like what drives them in that story. Like how did they get to where they are today? What kind of trials did they push through? Like how do I identify with that? You know, that's really really important. Um, so I think for examples for us as YouTube creators, like Shay Carl, like his creation story is one that if you've ever heard. Heard him talk or be interviewed, like he goes back to that. Like, hey guys, I was just a working a nine to five job that I hated. I was a grant, I was make, like doing granite uh, countertops every day. Um, stumbled into YouTube, and then you know here he is, like he's a co-owner of Maker Studios and you know several million subscribers and stuff. And now he's just l making a living off of what he what he loves. And so that's like an inspiring story that we know that story. This, or Philip DeFranco, right? He was just like a guy who actually was. Um, really like in the YouTube community but just like watching people and he didn't really want to get involved because he's kind of shy of the cameras but um, then one creator stopped and he felt like that left a void I think it was um, uh, Z Frank stopped and so then he felt like he wanted to fill that void so he just started and never had a big viral hit or anything just slow growth steadily over time and now you know he's uh, at revision 3 and has sold uh, his company and has done some pretty crazy stuff with that so um, like those are those are stories that help give us context for what those people are doing on YouTube. So let's talk about the creed. What is the the creed? Can you explain that just real briefly again? Yeah, the creed is really uh, every belief system comes with uh, some core principles: a belief in life after death, a belief that the state is supreme, a belief in uh, that we uh, should all be uh, there should be a computer on every table, and the and this is really the in standard mark typical marketing we call this the positioning and it's uh, elemental for t helping differentiate you uh, f from your com competitors and we and when we get into uh, personality brands and so forth it's really about what you believe in um, what would you be in some cases it's what would you be willing to die for yeah. and the and, and so it's elemental and it takes a lot of with one client, we spent a huge client that has um, a billion dollar enterprise out in the marketplace. We spent three hours with the founders and key stakeholders discussing why they came to work in the morning. And, um, and, and that's huge. I mean, to have a bunch of millionaires in the room, successful people in the room, and they're wondering why they come to work in the morning. <laughs> so yeah. this is a. Yeah, so you're not alone in trying to figure right. this out, and it's not an easy thing. Some a lot of times, and uh, but it's crucial because it's what yeah. really differentiates you. Yeah, yeah. So for me, like, um, like what is that singular notion that you want people to believe? You know, like all men are created equal. Like that's the founding. You know, like we know that's from right. At least if you're from the U.S., you do hopefully. Uh, well, I think it's it's why you believe, and then it's ultimately it's why you belong. And it's yes. why people are moving to Brooklyn instead of you know staying on the Lower East Side of New York, you know, because Brooklyn has um, has uh, beliefs and ways of thinking that um, some people adhere to more than uh, Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a couple uh, quick examples of this that I see, you know, like one here at Video Creators, I say in like the end of every video, I'm like, and the reason I do this, guys, is because I really believe that some of you guys have messages that can really change the world, and I want to do what I can to help you spread your message so that it reaches the people who need to hear what you have to say. Like, that's kind of what I believe. That's what's driving me. That's what motivates me to do this is to help you guys change lives, uh, not just viewing, you know, views um, and subscribers as like statistics to acquire, but these are actually like views and subscribers represent actual people and if they're giving us like a couple minutes a day to like speak into their life like what are we going to do with that opportunity and so that's what I believe about uh, myself that's what I believe about you guys uh, that's what drives the content I do on other channels and so that's like the that's kind of like I haven't figured out like a really succinct way is that really important to have like a really succinct like one statement that you can really caps encapsulate that in to yeah a lot of times I mean for HP it's invent a lot of times in um Traditional marketing, it's something that's been whittled down and distilled down, and copywriters, series of copywriters have gone at it and approached it. And, um, you know, so you get it down to just do it or think different or invent. And, 
I think the other thing that's important to say is that um, it's really about uh, it's the why as some people say it's the why yeah. you exist it's the kind of a higher order thing it's not you make shoes you know it's about fighting sloth yeah and that's one of the things I talk about in my ebook um, for you guys who haven't checked it out it's the secret to building your YouTube audience and a lot of us influenced on Patrick's book here but going deeper into that why what I try to do there is is ask a series of questions that will that if you wrestle through these questions hopefully they lead you to discover that why and then based on that why like uh, outside of views and money and subscribers like I think that all those are actually symptoms of something bigger and um, and hopefully helping you discover that why, like what drives you, what do you believe about this um, that is actually causing you and prompting you to create the content that you do. And if you can identify that, like I feel like it's really much easier for people to naturally gravitate to people who believe something and have that um, than people who are just like, hey guys, subscribe to my channel so I can get more views and make more money. Like that's not very compelling, right? <laughs> Uh, for anyone to want to well, be it's very basic, and, and it's not really going to be meaningful to most people. Yeah, and it's not very um, genuine. Yeah, if people want to feel like they're part of something bigger, right? That's not yeah. really bigger. That's just like, okay, well, I hope that works out for you. I'm not part of that, you know. Right. Uh, so a couple examples I see on YouTube, like Vlog Brothers, do this a couple different ways. DFTBA, which could also apply later to the. Um, the uh, the sacred words, but it stands for don't forget to be awesome. Uh, you have other guys um, like all oh, the Vogue brothers also say decreasing world decrease world suck. You know that's kind of like a creed. Um, uh, well, Google Connor used Manning to be don't says, be evil, right? I'm sorry. Google used to be don't be evil. Yeah, yeah, right? yep. Um, Connor Manning's like, and you've just become a little bit more awesome. Like people have these little creed belief statements that kind of encapsulate and summarize what they're all about. And uh, and what drives them, and people then who believe that stuff then are more likely to join in that. That's we could talk about this for a long time. This is like this is really important. Going back to some of the creation story stuff, I got a couple people here um, saying uh, I've actually hinged my community around who I am and what my mission is, and that is direct and that has directly created my creation story. So that that's great. And then yep. um, yeah, Ricky, I was actually going to say this. Uh, is this why Draw My Life is so successful. And for, for those of you who aren't familiar with Draw My Life, um, it was like this thing that was going like around on YouTube for a while where people were actually just telling their stories of like from birth to where they are now and just drawing it out in crude figures, usually in like a time lapse type of thing and just telling their stories. And even though some of those like videos were like really long, they're really popular because like we all innately want to know like what's your story, like where did you come from? And that was really, really instrumental in helping a lot of channels develop a really strong human connection with with their viewers. Yeah, other production. people's stories are fascinating to us, and we want to. We're looking for connections with people, uh, yeah. especially in today's world when we don't even know who our neighbors are most often. And yeah. so we're really looking. We we are hardwired as human beings to in our brains to want to connect with other people, and this is what makes social social media in itself so fascinating. And it's why this construct works because it's um, you this really plugs in all the points, the key points that we want as, as human beings. And so yeah. when, once you have all seven of these things, and it, honest, I look for eight, <laughs> but it seems to be seven, and the it, it's really about, um, it, it plugs in all of these the, these points. Now I'm being a little bit redundant, but but it's important. And if you have all seven of them, you know, in some some places you don't need all seven. Uh, when we work in marketing, like if you have a tire store or something like that, you, where the, the standards are pretty low, I guess the uh, you can get away with two or three or four or something like that, fewer than seven anyway. Um, but when you have all seven, that's when you really get into this really powerhouse narratives that people really pay attention, snaps their heads around. Yeah. Uh, and the, yes, and to go back to your your question, like the channel trailer is definitely a good place to put this. Like if you can tell that story, because that was will well, help entice people to subscribe and kind of draw them in to your channel. If you guys want to see the example I'm talking about, it's outdated now. It's like a year old, so I need to make like a new creation story. Because um, well, I need to update the creation story, not make a new one. <laughs> but uh, because a lot of well, I think that this is the this is the thing that really sets you apart. Once you get grab people's attention. 
and make them interested. Um, you like your lip syncing to you know some well-known tune or something like that, as we see so often. Or your better, better your cat is lip syncing to a well-known tune. The um, it just makes the uh, put a backstory behind it and it starts make making it become more meaningful rather than just a one-off. And yeah. that's what dif really differentiates things from that are just fads from things that have more like life right. over time. Yeah. So if you guys want to see the example of my creation story on my, fam on my family's channel, it's uh, youtube.com slash godrocks, G-O-D-R-O-X. Um, and you can go there. Um, I made it in 2006 before people were using their real names on the internet, so that's what I've stuck with. <laughs> but that's what it is. And you, I made like a short, like animated video. I put a lot of time and energy into that, um, and I need to make a, an updated one. But that hopefully brings people up to speed of where my wife and I have come from. Uh, another way, like an easy way to do this, the creation story. Then we've got to jump to icons before we run out of time. Um, is um, like I actually just took like uh, when we hit uh, what was it? Um, 500 videos or something on that channel, which spanned for us 2006 to 2011 or 12 or something, 11 or something like that. I just made a montage of like um, the top highlights of our past, um, what's that, like six, seven years on YouTube, and just made like and told the story overarching like our life from when my wife and I were my very first video to dating to marriage to kids to moving like and just kind of made a montage and told the whole story of our, of our life in like a minute and a half. So if you don't want to script something and make something, you could always just like take a lot of clips from your old videos and put it together in a way that makes sense. So that channel or that video is also available on that other channel and I will link to them in the description text below this video for you guys who are watching later so you can quickly go find it. Okay, let's talk about um, the icons. We gotta keep moving here. So the, the icons, um, the visual icon should attempt, should attract attention and assert requisite values of authority, leadership and confidence. They should provide relevance. Um, so uh, well, what else yeah, the icons are quick snapshots of meaning. So you see the Nike uh, swoosh, and you instantly know it's Nike, and it it instantly conjures up all of these feelings that we have about Nike, or that we have about Starbucks, or uh, that we have about Coke, whether whether they're positive or negative, and um, and those things, um, you know, those are sensations, sometimes physical, almost as. But definitely, most emotional sensations that we have, feelings that we have toward them, and, and personalities toward people, toward places, and, and so forth, and they engage all the senses, and that's the important thing I think is that, um, of course, in video or uh, you know, visual productions, uh, we still ha we still don't have the smellathon, so <laughs> we're uh, limited in the number of senses we can really um, prod, but uh, yeah. poke at, but the um, you know, when we think about camera angles, you think about lighting, you think about sound, music, and so forth. Uh, all of these things have triggers to them. And yeah. uh, you see something that's black and white, and you think of film noir, right? And you can play around with that. When you uh, hear iconic musical stings, uh, they signal something, you know, horror or... or um, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we play around with those and uh, and and treat them differently. And so, the using those triggers artfully and um, dramatically, or, you know, sets us apart. Yeah. So a couple ideas, like for YouTube guys, is like um, I would think you would agree with this, Patrick, that like your face. Like if you're on video, like I am, like your face becomes part yeah. of the icon, right? It's also tied to the leader yeah. later, but. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, and then, uh, and then there they, are, of course, iconic leaders. You know, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Hitchcock. And so yeah, um, George Washington. Yeah, a lot of those guys. Abe Lincoln. Bingo. So, um, uh, so another way you can do that is like just think, think of like of yourself. Like this might sound weird, but like you, like your face is actually kind of like the one of the icons for your channel. Uh, another way to do this is um, like an all your, like your branding around your channel, which would include like your channel avatar and your header image. Uh, some people do like a pretty solid job with their thumbnails. Like they they have their face on their thumbnails. Like if you look at Black Nerd Comedy at Andre, on, uh, Andre Meadows channel over there, like you'll see that he has like um, one of two pictures of himself in every single thumbnail. Like off to kind of like the left side. I guess this is left for you guys, but um, off to the left side. And um, and so like when you're just like skimming through your subscriptions on YouTube, you're like ah. 
that is Black Nerd Comedy. Like, I recognize that instantly because of the thumbnail. Vice, uh, youtube.com slash vice does something very similar, but there the icon isn't necessarily a person or a face. What they're using there is actually like a word mark, and they um, have like a semi-transparent overlay over all the YouTube uh, thumbnails that kind of gives it like that iconic deal, like you recognize it um, right away. Uh, the internet killed television, Toby Turner, like all these guys have found ways to turn um, the internet killed television is Charles Chirpy at CTFXC, um, but his kind of thing that, you know, um, well, anyway, I can get off onto that. But you know, Well, your home about, page yeah. is iconic. Uh, the typography that you use is I iconic. Uh, the way you shoot yourself is iconic, can be mm -hmm. iconic, and um, and just the way that you represent yourself, whether it's a yeah. kind of a soft feel or a comedic feel or a um, a goth feel. Yeah, the, these are all they all symbolize something, right? I and learned what mine is. Um, and fuzzy one, <laughs> fuzzy Anna pals. For Tim, it's the hat. Yeah, it's so like, and I and I actually never intended it for to be that, but uh, like us, like people ask me like when I switched hats from this old dirty. Thing to like this one, like I got more comments about that in the video than anything else. <laughs> right. <laughs> because like this has got holes. They're like, oh, we kind of missed the old hat, and I was like, well, and we wouldn't recognize my you wife made me get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, cool. So those are the icons. Um, for you guys who are watching a recording of this later, um, I'm going to show you a quick ad real quick, but hang tight, and we're going to keep going here in just a minute. For the rest of us, um, or for welcome back, people who just saw an ad, <laughs> uh, the rituals. What are the rituals, just real briefly again? Well, rituals are these repeated interactions that we have with our viewers, uh, and they are they can be either positive or negative. If you want a negative ritual, you know, call your bank, right, uh, yeah. or the plumber. In my case, uh -huh. uh, the and if you want a positive one, get a hug. But these are the, really the interactions that we have that uh, are repeated over time. And when we're talking about filmmaking, as we were talking earlier, you know, the, the way that we cut, cut it, um, there are certain expectations that people have when they sit down to watch something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, from rolling the credits to everything that happens, the sequence of things that happen in the middle to the end and so forth. Yeah. And... Um, you know, I don't know if you, anyone remembers the film Memento, but that oh. screwed all that up. You know, and by running it backwards and so I love forth, that. and oh, so it, things like that uh, really start to uh, you know play with your minds, right? And mm -hmm. so how you're able to do that in a convincing way, Memento was very successful at doing it, yeah. and I think we've all experienced other movies that were less have been less successful at playing with our heads like that. But uh, how well you're able to do that, you know, really dictates or demonstrates your mastery of the craft. And yeah. uh, so anyway, the there are a series of expectations that come with video making and production and film production that uh, we can play with. First of all, we need to master, I think, and then we can certainly play with. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the things you said in your book, I'm going to quote you directly here, is um, is taking the chaff of off of um, the chaff of everyday life, the seemingly ordinary events in our daily routine, and turning them into special moments is what helps successful marketers stand out, or in our case, successful YouTube creators. And so I think yeah. like these rituals, like we really need to be intentional uh, about how we incorporate these into each of our videos and into our channel as a whole. Like it's something maybe we haven't really thought about before, but a couple examples um, for YouTube is like one, just like uploading on our videos on a regular basis, like on a predictable, consistent schedule. Um, like your content becomes part of your subscribers' weekly routine. Like you're just kind of like just like their favorite TV shows. Like I really love like Arturo Trejo. So every Thursday, I know I go to his channel and I can watch one of his new videos. Like it's part of my routine, right? And so that becomes like part of the ritual for me with with his content. It also applies, I think, to following like the like the certain kind of format that you follow in your videos as well. You know whether um, you know that is uh, you know like. Can you guys see me by the way? Am I here? I can see you. Oh, okay. Sorry, I disappeared. Anyway, 
Um, but following like a, a, a predictable similar format in each of your videos um, where it's like hey like like in my videos here at video creators you know like I have like a 15 seconds where I like I'm gonna pitching the value of the next six minutes that we're gonna talk about like here's what it's about here's what I'm going to discuss and hopefully that lures you in we cut then to a little bit of branding which is like, the only reason I use that is because I want people to know this is about mastering the platform and spreading a message that gives like new viewers some context um, and then we go into it. So you guys like that becomes part of the ritual, uh, the formatting. Uh, and then the call to actions that we do, like, hey guys, comment. Like that is something I've noticed um, with this channel, video creators, is um, every video I do, um, almost every video I have, like, I want you guys to comment about something. Let's discuss this. It's hopefully not something I'm saying, hey, just comment to add more value to my video. But it's like, hey guys, um, I'm just giving some value to you, like. Get some value back to me, and it's like this uh, communal like discussion that we have, and uh, so that so the commenting exp becomes part of the ritual experience, favoriting, liking, sharing, um, and then even like even sometimes like some of you guys um, who are watching this will know you know if they do intro of darkness, then redness, then whiteness, you know like you know who that is like I guess Toby Turner right, and that becomes part of the ritual of every video. Like if he doesn't do that, you feel like well, like something's off here, right? Like it's just not it's just not right. So um, that's great. When and around. when you watch something that's formatted like Jimmy Kimmel or something like that, you know after a certain point in time, you realize uh, ritual can become routine and it can become expected and eventually lame and and boring. And so yeah. once in a while you have to change things up a little bit and become, uh, I mean that's a great example is you know when Letterman or Conan O'Brien or some of these other guys, they, they move up to the lens and, and kind of disturb that fourth wall. And um, is it the fourth wall? Anyway, one of the, yeah. <laughs> disturb the, the whole thing. And so the, uh, so that's important. I mean it's good to change it up and it's important to understand that ritual can become routine and can become expected and, and boring. So. Uh, our job as producers is to, um, and creators, is to make things exciting and become an surprising and unexpected. Yeah. So and keep interest, and, and so that it doesn't become uh, just routine. Yeah. Would constantly using sites like Facebook and Twitter be a community's ritual? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I should have mentioned that earlier. Yes, awesome. and Pinterest and 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 so forth, and, and Snapchat. Most recently, and these are all rituals, ritualistic behaviors, and how we enter into them and get out of them is um, uh, is is a ritual as well. And when we use them, is also ritualistic. So there's a again, it's a repeat. Rituals are repeated behaviors or interactions that we have uh, with our community, and we ha may have different members of the community in f like Facebook, let's say, rather than Snapchat, yeah. for example. Different demographic, different age groups, and so forth. Yeah. Pick, uh, powerful picker says, first people. step in the ritual, wear a robe. <laughs> <laughs> Always a toga. Always I, uh, a toga. Yeah. Don't think you guys would Or a baseball cap. Cool. Uh, so the ritual is really important. Uh, the pagan slash non-believers. Um, this, I think, is probably one of the most underestimated like things that we actually consider as far as building a community. Um, I'm just going to read from your book. It says, part of saying who you are and what you stand for is also declaring who you are not and what you don't stand for. Defining your pagans is important in defining who you are. Once you understand who the pagans are, those who do not and perhaps will never understand you, you open up new opportunities to be who you are and manifest your potential for what you can become. So I think a lot of us, like, we try to really hard just get like everyone to like us. Like we want to just be like the biggest, most popular channel on YouTube by making content we hope is widely accepted. But what you're saying here is actually like no, you actually need to intentionally set yourself against someone or something. Yeah, I else. never really realized exactly how important this was, this aspect of it was. And I just I thought in the beginning that we just as human beings we need someone to batter up against, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but Really, it's uh, we have to understand, especially in marketing, whether we're marketing ourselves or a product or a company, is that we always tend to think that every eventually everyone is going to understand how wonderful and terrific we are, and they're all going to want us. And that's never the case. There are always going to be some people out there who just plain aren't interested and don't want us, and may not may even dislike actively dislike us. And so the thing that we have to understand is 
Um, and this was the great realization, I think, is that is that by understanding who we are not and never want to become, we help define who we are and, and who, what we do want to become. And that's incredibly in, uh, differentiating and um, insightful. Uh, yeah. And it's important to recognize uh, what right. you don't want to be uh, yeah, as a that, human being as well. Yeah, and in order to do that, you first have to actually know, like, and believe, like, what do I stand for? What do I want to become? Like, in order to have pagans, like, in the first place. And I think it's something a lot of us maybe haven't thought to, through as much as we probably should have. When I was typing up my notes for this, a, a little phrase that came to mind that I put down was, if you don't stand for anything, no one will stand with you, right? Like, if you're just not yeah. standing for anything, like, you're not going to have a group of people that stand behind you and say, yes, I'm with you, I believe what you believe, the creed, the creation story, like, all that stuff. You know, it's, you got to stand for something. And by doing so, you will set yourself against some other communities, um, but that's kind of like what's necessary to really solidify um, that community. A couple exactly. of examples. And I think the other point that has to be made, Tim, is that yeah. we are all of us. I mean, we talk about social communities and all this kind of thing, but, but we are all uh, members of many different communities. We're a member of a family, which is a community. We're a mm -hmm. members of, you know, different clubs. You know, we're a brother, we're a sister, we're a... Um, uh, might be a teacher or you might have an occupation but you might also be a member of a book club that's a little community you know mm -hmm. you might play poker you know that's another community and how you might like uh, sports you know you might be a, a football fan that's or a soccer fan that's those are other communities and they all have their own creation story they only have all have their own creeds uh, they own all, all have their own icons and rituals of course and their own set of words and how well we know all of that um, and how well we and we feel we belong to all these things, and so yeah. we should not take it um, just by looking at social communities, social media communities, but the whole the holistic thing. And yeah. as you walk around today, you know you'll notice that there are different creation stories, uh, you know, that belong to the car that you that you sit in, uh, and the TV shows you watch. There are different creeds and icons and and all seven pieces. So. Yeah. For all of these things, the car you drive, the t shows you watch, the food you eat, the clothes you wear. Yeah. There's the last week, guys, those of you who are kind of like YouTube community people, you'll know this story. But last week, there's a very popular YouTuber, 2 point something million subscribers, Joe, uh, Joey Gracifa. And uh, he made a little vlog about um, you know how his, tow his car was towed and said some inappropriate, unnecessary things, stretch the story to his favor, of course, never thinking that the real story would ever come out. Well, then, like, last week, the guy who actually had his car towed for parking in front of his driveway comes out with this video, shows a picture of where he actually parked, and kind of, like, says, no, Joey, here's actually what happened. And so instantly what, what happened is you have, like, all the people who were, like, want to be on Joey's side, you know, his, like, fan club, like, comes to, like, no, like, this guy's a jerk for saying that type of stuff. And all that, like, it really divided, like, not necessarily his community, but, like, the YouTube people. Like, and you saw exactly, you know, who the, the non-believers were and who the believers were in him, like, depending on which side of that story, which I personally thought was hilarious <laughs> both ways. Yeah. But, um, but that was, like, a perfect example of, for me, in a way, of saying, like, these guys, like, they're not Joey fans and they probably never will be, so for them, like, this is a unifying experience for them and for the people who are Joey fans, like, this is a very unifying, solidifying experience for them also, like, this, this little complex. So, like, those, like, you need those in order to solidify those communities communities. Um, so the sacred words. Now this is going to be a fun one because we have this all over YouTube in many different ways. Um, the sacred word is a belief system that comes, like all belief systems, Patrick says in his book, come with a set of specialized words that must be learned before people can belong. If you know the language, you belong. Uh, can you give us some quick examples of that, you know, and out there that most of us re would recognize? Um, I don't know, best boy. You know, yeah. a grip. Um, what else? DP. DP. Things like that in the film film world. But the you know the one I always use is ice skinny decaf uh, grande latte. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. Which we all had to learn and have all kind of experienced, uh, like it or not, at Starbucks. And uh, and so, but if you are, you know, if you're a baseball fan, a soccer fan, rugby fan, 
uh, whatever, tennis fan, uh, there are special words, paddleboarding enthusiast, you know, there are special words there that you have to learn if you want to become a part of that group. And the, yeah. you know, if you're a baseball fan and you can cite games or players or stats that go all the way back to the 30s or before, uh, you're a heck of a fan, right? Yeah. And how well we know those words, whether we're doctors or lawyers or, or, or video production people, um, yeah, you know, like how well we know those words, or... you know, dictates where we stand in the hierarchy. And yeah. uh, knowing those words uh, suggests how well uh, and how deeply you are a member of that community. So yeah, I'm not a huge sports fan, like personally, like I don't watch like football, baseball. I just don't really have time for that and really no interest to be honest. Uh, but whenever I hang out with like a lot of other guys, like they're talking to like people's names, talking about different games and sports teams, and I'm just like, you know, again, yeah, and you're just an, you're an I'm outsider, not, right? You yeah. know that you're an outsider, yeah. And yeah. you don't belong there. You're just, you know, a member while you're sitting there, you know, sharing a beer or whatever. Yeah, and like, okay. uh, let's talk about YouTube. Can we do that? And then they're the outsider. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So some examples for you guys here on YouTube, like audience. You know, Toby Turner does that. Um, DFTBA. We already talked about that one. Nerd Fighters, another one from the Vlog Brothers. Uh, Beard Lovers. You know, you'll recognize that from Weezy Waiter. Mooshers. Um, I'm vlogging here. You know, from Shay Carl. Mythical Beast. Super Note. Project for Awesome. Like. Uh, and there's a lot of these channels actually have like a lot of sacred words built in that like if someone says um, maybe off YouTube like um, for me my wife and I are you know Dave, big Dave Ramsey fans as, like, as far as like financial stuff is concerned and so if you say uh, you know um, uh, we're living today we are living like no one else so later we can live like no one else right or mm -hmm. um, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing better than I deserve. Like these are like different parts of like the language that if someone says I'm better than I deserve, you instantly think, oh, you listen to Dave Ramsey on the radio, <laughs> you know, uh, those those types of things. I, I had a question for you about this, Patrick, though, because um, on YouTube, uh, a lot of these words that I just said are actually ones that this, like people describing their audience. So if you are a viewer of a certain channel, like those, it's kind of like a little affectionate word that those creators have for their audience, you know. So they'll call them like beard lovers, for example. Um, yeah. But a lot of people in the audience don't really like being labeled sometimes that way. And then um, a lot of creators also don't want to label their audience because they feel like it's kind of. Um, uh, like kind of corny, kind of like, you know, like it's not my personality to give like a pet name to the people who watch. Um, is there a way, like one, is that important to do? And two, if it is, is there a way to do it in a way that's like not corny? Well, I think that, um, I don't know that that's necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it, I don't know um, if it's a specific example necessarily, except that it's always more authentic if you have, if the viewers label themselves like uh, mm -hmm. TED conference TED people people that went to the TED conferences years to go years ago they used to call themselves Tedsters or uh, Budweiser beer people started calling it Bud and for decades and until finally you know Budweiser caught up and started calling it Bud themselves yeah. uh, American Express Amex you know McDonald's Mickey D's and stuff like that that's um, authentic it comes out of the from the community rather than someone from the top down putting a label on people and I think that's what they object to the um, yeah yeah um, yeah I just saw uh, DK uh, DK Larations had that same question so um, sorry yeah. we were thinking the same thing so I'm glad we asked that um, so uh, I think so and maybe you would agree I think that it's, I think that it's great when it's authentic authentic and it's coming from the community itself. Okay. And if the community comes up with that on their own, then it's okay. I'm curious what the video creators community would call themselves. You guys need to leave some comments. Uh, that should be fun to <laughs> see what you guys would come up with. Um, so I think another thing that's important to do, like, and it's kind of like putting a lot of these different ideas together, is like, it's, um, like if you have a sacred word that also hints at your creation story and encapsulates your creed like all in one um, like you pro could you hit like three birds with one stone in that way like if you just made up a word yeah I think so I mean liberty or something like that I don't even know if that's a good example off the top of my head but the um, yes if you could encapsulate that 
Um, yeah, so maybe making up a word that like summarizes your creed or that summarizes yeah. the mission of a special project that you and your channel and the community that like, you're trying to mobilize that community to do. Um, I mean, a lot of times, of course, the, um, the your creed can become a part of your lexicon. You know, think different. You know, some things that uh, kind of take off in the society, if you will, um, yeah. do that. And... Um, uh, yeah, I'm not coming up with any off the top of my head, but yeah, no, that's good. That helps. Do that. That's that's golden. Yeah, the rest of you guys who are watching this recorded, we are going to jump to one last ad break right now. So we'll be back right after this. All right, let's talk about the leader, um, the last person, the last part of this thing. This is uh, the vision is um, what you said in your book. Vision is the most powerful ingredient to being successful. And that doesn't mean keeping people revved up. It means keeping people, period. Um, and then I've taken liberty to tweak what you said in your book. Um, it says, the equity in our YouTube channels is our people. So can you explain this um, a little bit further, like what you mean by like the sure. equity? Yeah. The, the, leader, uh, the leader usually generally has the vision. I mean, I, you would certainly say that Steve Jobs has, was the vision behind Apple. Mm -hmm. And, for example, or Edison... Uh, back when he was inventing, or um, you know Lennon and McCartney for the Beatles, or you know Lady Gaga, uh, certainly the um, the keeper of her vision, and, and others out there, uh, really iconoclasts and people who are visionary, right? And yeah. so these people uh, it is their responsibility and their goal, I think, ultimately to be able to wrap together a story, a narrative for themselves uh, and or their products that is uh, believable, authentic, convincing, and, and attracts people to them. And yeah. so, and, and some people like Madonna, Lady, and now, now Lady Gaga, and you know, now my, Miley Cyrus, you know, keep reinventing their narrative and keep, re keep reinventing themselves. And through reinventing themselves, uh, they have to reinvent the narrative, okay? And and so when they do this, they look at their creation story. Well, does my creation story now align with my new creed, whatever that may be? Do, and does that do those propel my new icons, my or and or my new rituals, and or my non-believers? You know, am yeah. I going to be turning my getting new fans, or am I going to be turning while well, I'm turning off my old ones? And so this becomes very tricky. Um, and ha needs to be very well thought out because as you are losing um, old fans, you want to make sure that you are attracting new ones, right? Yeah. Um, just turning to Miley Cyrus, you know, because that's the most recent um, thing. Um, how many people is she turning off as she turns others on? You know, yeah. is a real question you have to ask, and and I hope it works. Yeah. One thing that you said in the book that I th was really powerful for me that I've been thinking, there's like so much jam packed into this. <clears throat> I'm going to quote you. It says, The leader's quest in primal narrative frequently becomes mythic simply because that is the most powerful form of storytelling. And what I think you mean by that, at least is the way I took it, is that like whatever I am pursuing as the creator of, you know, this channel, video creators, um, if it's about like a vision, like that I'm a lead, I'm the leader. I have a vision for something bigger. And in this case, it's like changing lives here on YouTube. And me and that, like that pursuit of that becomes like like people want to join into that narrative, into that story with me. Hopefully, not everyone will. Like the pagans, the unbelievers, they might not want to right. and I actually need that, right? But um, but that becomes like. Um, what well, becomes an against a story that's against all odds, and it's a it's a, a story that's larger than life, and it becomes yeah. a story that um, that the rest of us want to belong to, and right. Some level. But I mean, it's also like not just about me telling you a story, like hey guys, you know, and I can have lots of stories I could share about how people's lives and like have they told me have been influenced and changed by some of the content that my wife and I do on our family channel. But instead, it's like you get to join into that story, like we're actually do like we're actually living out this narrative together and so like we're kind of like we're on a journey together rather than me just telling you stories that might be cool like this is uh, like the most powerful form of storytelling is experiencing that story in real time with the creator with the person you're watching on YouTube so 
That's how I took it. I thought it was awesome. I think that the, that it's also uh, getting back to the why that we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. and having that why be something that's not just a uh, a, a one off, but really is a progression towards some um, that something that we can all aspire to, and that it's something that uh, we want to join into and become a part of, and. And yeah. join that community. We want to. This is a place that we where we want to belong, and we don't, generally don't want to belong to one-offs. So cool. that it's very. That's why it's very important, as we, as you were pointing out earlier, to really come up with something that's um, a higher order benefit, has some kind of a higher order meaning, uh, that is bringing something new and different to the world. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reading what you guys are saying in the comments as far as. <laughs> Interesting. Miley turns no one on. <laughs> 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 then, um, where's the other one? Oh, yeah. My Flynn's gaming. Miley Cyrus doesn't turn me on, lol. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I see what you guys are voting on for the our, our name, too. That's kind of how the put some in for that in that second. So, I think anyway. Miley's biggest contribution, actually, to date has become a new word that's all of a sudden all, all over the place, right? Starts with a T and twerking. Twerking. And, and yes. uh, she's brought a new word into the vocabulary, which existed before, but she's certainly popularized it, right? So yeah. there now we have a new uh, sacred word. Yeah. In our lexicon. So let me give you guys some examples for this. Um, at least how I was thinking about it. Uh, one example: the leader is obviously you, right? In your channel, if you are yeah. like me, you're on on camera. Some of you guys may be like I know Fuzzy Wuzzy Anna Pal Anna Pals was on our um, hangout last week. She's a puppet, you know. So her puppet is actually like the leader, surrogate leader, of course, right? Um, but uh, or maybe you're doing a web series on YouTube, like whoever that main character is that you are trying to get the viewers to fall in love with, to identify with, to care about, like that that character then becomes the leader of that show or that web series. Um, so thinking about that leader and what their vision is for the channel, for the content, for their community that they're fostering, all that is is really important. So. Um, guys, we have only really covered like section one very briefly <laughs> in the book. Uh, section two goes into primal belonging, and that's where you, Patrick, you discuss um, like the one phrase I pulled out of there from your book. It says, we all want to feel that we are part of something larger than ourselves. Create a belief system that attracts community. And that's a little bit more of the second section. And the third section is about primal reengineering, it's called, which is which discusses how we can communicate the different pieces of the primal primal code. And in your context here is for branding and marketing, but it easily translates to well, your YouTube channels, because we are branding and marketing yep. ourselves here on YouTube, whether we like that, like to think that way um, or not. Uh, yes, ninety. Uh, my channel is God actually got it right. Um, ninety four. So thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And um, it looks like people f are are voting for everyone. Vote for Schmoyers. I'm not really <laughs> sure you become a Schmoyer just by watching my channel, but we could go for that and, uh, and see what happens. I'll check out um, what you guys are voting for down there a little bit later. So it, again, thank you, Patrick, so much for helping us understand some of the stuff about creating communities around our channel. Um, you guys want to go check him out. Like the book is linked up below. Like I said, also at thinktopia.com or uh, check him out on Forbes.com where he writes a lot about this type of stuff as well. Um, and uh, you guys can also follow him on Twitter at Hanlon Patrick. Is that correct? Yes. Pretty sure it was uh, Hanlon Patrick. So you guys check him out there. And thank you guys all for hanging out with us. If this is your first time here, we'd love to have you subscribe because my belief system here is, like I've already said, is that you guys, um, I know a lot of you have messages that can change the world and influence people's lives. And I want to do everything I can to help you guys spread that because I feel like I can multiply myself. Like I know a little bit about YouTube and I can do some things on my own, but if I could actually help like a lot of you guys, um, like spread messages like through all your channels and your audience like I feel like I can multiply myself through you and together as a community we can actually do a lot more together than we could ever do apart so thank you for letting me be a part of that with you guys and I will look forward to catching up on all your comments below and seeing what we are going to be called if anything at all so thanks for hanging out with us guys and I will see you guys again next month for our next live um, on air hangout see you then bye thanks everyone